and our bodies were so compatible too. It was almost a waste to make you my first man. Shiaki fixes her disheveled clothes and grabs her bag, but leaves the envelope with the tickets on the table. Well, it is what it is. I'll just go home for today. Tomorrow is the final rehearsal, after all. Her words have also completely changed to match her attitude, and she's now showing me that she's completely lost all interest in me. Assuming the attitude she's taking with me is no mere act, that is. Hmm? But if it's no mere act, then what? Chiaki! My cry out to Chiaki came a moment too late. She'd already walked out the door, but... Feeling in the mood after all? A few moments later, Chiaki opened the door and asked me that, looking slightly uncomfortable. Was everything you did today just an act? Huh? It's only natural for her to feel uncomfortable. After all, if she's putting on an act right now, she's doing a rather poor job of it. Can you say for certain that there wasn't even a hint of genuine emotion from you? Uh, well... She would wait for a moment before closing the door if she was only acting. She'd expect me to try and stop her, right? If it wasn't just an act, then please say so. Ha Haruki? If she wasn't acting when she tried to leave earlier, it means that Chiaki's no longer interested in me. But what if that was an act? I want you to swear on it. And... Tell me the whole truth. Otherwise, I won't be able to bring myself to believe your words. If the attitude she's taking with me right now is merely an act, then it means that the real Chiaki hasn't lost interest in me. I mean, even if you say that, no matter what I say at this point, you won't believe me, Haruki. If it was just an act after she pinned me down, what Chiaki was truly seeking wasn't just a physical relationship. Then, how about this? Please give me a cue when you're telling me the truth. Place both hands on your chest, for example. If everything she did after coming here today was just an act, then the real Chiaki isn't the usual Chiaki anymore. What are you talking about? I don't understand. If the very decision to come over today was part of an act, she hasn't given a proper explanation as to why she actually came here. Please, promise me. Please give me a Chiaki whom I can believe in. Haruki. It is the Epimenides Paradox. Izumi Chiaki herself claims that Izumi Chiaki is a liar. If you don't do that, I can't tell if you're the Chiaki who would coldly push me away and who I should abandon, or the Chiaki who would gently embrace me and who I should yearn for. Chiaki is too contradictory today. What she just did had no goal meaning whatsoever. Who was she trying to deceive? You're expecting me to cling to you? To crumble in tears and beg for your forgiveness? Only if it won't be an act. <laughs> Are you an idiot? Was that an act? You didn't show me the cue. <laughs> well... It's your own problem if you believe me or not. Regardless, if it's an act or if it's the truth, it's what I said. Chiaki. If you're going that far, then I'll teach you how to distinguish it. If you couldn't believe it, then it means my acting was bad. If you believed it, then it means my acting was perfect. Uh. That's the only difference. This is so unlike her. 
the way she just lashed out at me didn't touch me at all. It's unimaginable, given how impeccable her acting should be. Without a doubt, Chiaki is acting really strangely today. I have no idea in what direction she tried to sway my heart. I really can't see what she was trying to accomplish if she only wanted to make me mad. Is that all you wanted to say? Then I'm leaving for real this time. <sighs> I didn't stop her from leaving this time. Chiaki slams the door shut as he leaves. And then... Oh, right. I forgot to tell you one thing. Chiaki shows off a bit more of her terrible acting once again. I loved you, Haruki. No one else in the world knows you as well as I do. And even until the very end, she refused to show the cue I asked her for, never placing her hands on her chest. February 28th, Monday. Hey, can someone get that real quick? Ah, no, uh, that won't do. Hang on for a sec. This part's sliding off. The bento boxes have arrived. Whoever's free should eat up as soon as they can. <clears throat> so, it's finally time. <clears throat> After three years of planning, three months of script writing, and one month of production, Sonochi Akira's life work is finally complete. I suppose this is where I die then. Well, all jokes aside, you did work so hard that it wouldn't be surprising if you collapsed at any moment now. Not really. It's just the usual. This particular performance is special. Not a single person who supported you quit. Usually, at least five people would quit after each public performance. I was being more selfish than I usually was, though. Yeah, you went even more overboard than usual as well. You pushed yourself right to the edge of collapse. But... That attitude of yours must have made an impression on the others as well. Not really. Not a single thing I did was for you or any of the other members, President. It doesn't matter what exactly you pushed yourself so far for. Even when you're struggling, you still desperately try your best to move forward. And that's what moved everyone, Princess. What do you mean? I didn't notice this right before rehearsal, since everything seemed normal. But I was quite surprised when I walked into the club room just a moment ago. Ah. Well, I've forbidden anyone from entering for the time being. It'll probably take a whole day clean up that mess. Mm. I've sent the laptop for repairs, but from the looks of things, I imagine we'll need to buy a new one. I'll compensate you for it, okay? So don't tell me to change how I'm acting. Don't even try to correct me either. We're about to present the real performance. Things like this happen. I'm not mad about this or anything. All right, then. So, you didn't make up with your boyfriend in the end, huh? You skipped practice the whole day yesterday just so you could meet him, right? I don't know what you're talking about. So, that trump card of yours didn't end up working, did it? I bet he couldn't bring himself to trust you because you just acted the way you usually do, right? President... Wait, no. I was just trying to lighten the mood before the show with some banter. It was all just a joke. I wasn't serious about any of that. 
There's no need for you to worry about me. My personal life won't hinder my performance on stage at all. Well, based on what you've accomplished up until now, I can believe that. As you wish, President. I'll show you my best performance today. And this has nothing to do with your personal life, I take it. There's only four hours left until the live performance. It's about time we've finished getting everything up. Well, I plan on going back to the waiting room. What are you going to do, princess? I'll stay here a little longer for now. Isn't it cold here? Will you be all right? It's fine. Even if you say you're all right, princess, the one in your belly. <laughs> ah, well, see you at rehearsal then. The whole reason why it's called a trump card is because you're supposed to save it until the very end. The forecast for tonight is very chilly. Snow is likely not only in the mountains, but also scattered flurries in Tokyo. <sighs> Although it's going to be March by tomorrow, the way the wind pierces my skin suggests that there's still quite a long time before the first day of spring will arrive. Keeping true to the weather forecast, the sky is shrouded by gloomy, ashen clouds, such that my sense of time feels distorted. It's hard to believe it's only 1pm right now. But the weather isn't the only reason why my sense of time feels distorted. It's the last day of February, and university students have entered their spring break while high school students are transitioning to self-study given that the entrance exam period has passed and their results have been released. This station is the second nearest to my university, and it was never really a prosperous area to begin with. It feels as if there's more than a small trickle of people coming and going no matter the time. A florist single-mindedly tends to her flowers, illuminated by the dim lighting of her store, seemingly unconcerned about the prospects of any customers visiting. A part-timer, middle-aged lady diligently stocks the shelves of a supermarket storefront. An elderly person leisurely strolls by the shopping district without a destination in mind accompanied by a girl who seems to be their granddaughter, pushing their wheelchair. Nothing has changed since I enrolled in high school. I'm witnessing the same scenery as if time never passed here in this station that's only 15 minutes away from the school grounds by foot. I've noticed that the florist has more gray hairs on her head, though. And I've noticed the number of stores that are still operating within this district has reduced by about three. And the braided girl who worked part-time in the supermarket. I'm sorry for being late. Well, I just ended up coming early, that's all. You're right on time. I knew you would arrive 30 minutes in advance, Haruki-kun. Yet, I couldn't make it in time. I'm sorry. <laughs> she quit her job three years ago to become the singer of a certain band for a school festival. Audio is A-OK! -okay. Alright, stop the music. Let's set things up for Act 1. The stage setting doesn't seem to have any problems. Everything is going according to plan so far. This is a miracle. This is the first time something like this has happened in the two years since I've joined this troupe. It's actually concerning that things aren't going so smoothly. 
I hope nothing horrible happens during the actual performance, of course. We're just getting started. We're just getting more and more experienced. Well, I think so too. Things were quite difficult for us back when we were still amateurs. Didn't we only have like five people during our first public performance? We even asked people from other clubs to help us out. We didn't just need folks to help out backstage, but we also needed a candidate for our male lead. But we got into a big pickle again even after that performance, given that two people ended up quitting and we took flack from the other clubs. Ah, oh, but I was really moved by that first public performance. I immediately decided to join after witnessing it. Well, it's the same for me. The fact that you two joined the troupe really helped us out. There's no doubt that we would have been disbanded otherwise. That's because sonochi san was really amazing back then. I wanted to perform with her no matter what. You can say that again. We have to keep working hard. We've already come this far after all. That's right. No matter what happens. And regardless of who will be missing. By the way, President, how are things with you and the university? Are you graduating? Or are you getting expelled? Uh -uh. Ah, now that you mention it, isn't the graduation ceremony tomorrow? Even so... It seems you won't be able to graduate. In other words, you won't be able to assume the role of someone who manages a club within Hojo University. What are you saying? I have no intention of letting this Watos troupe end as just some university drama club, you know? N no, that's not the problem here. I was just wondering if you had to deal with stuff like negotiations and procedures concerning the university. For instance, will you be able to rent this North Hall despite not being considered a registered student? And you guys were going on saying that you'll all continue to work hard just a moment ago. No, President, these are completely separate matters. Uh, it's about time to start rehearsal, you know. There's less than two hours until our public performance. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. All right, let's get our first rehearsal started. Lower the curtains. Are you ready, princess? Absolutely. Why are you looking so pale? You're sweating quite a bit as well. I wonder if I'm getting too engrossed. And it's supposed to be just a rehearsal. You're giving me that explanation? Hey, could we have a look over here this time? H here? Ah! Oh. I suppose you might feel a little uncomfortable about entering a shop like this, Haruki-kun. It does look like a shop that caters only to girls. N no, um, that's not the issue here. What is it? You're sweating all of a sudden. It, it's, it's nothing. Alright, let's go in. Ah, you don't have to force yourself. It's not like there's something I specifically want to buy in there. No, I'm not forcing myself. Really, I... Well, let's just go. Ah, uh, um, hang on, Haruki-ku. Welcome. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Eh? Ah, uh, hello. It's been a while. I see you actually remember me. Of course. I'd never forget the face of a customer who's made a purchase here. That can't be true, strictly speaking. 
Though, to be fair, it'd be quite ridiculous of me to expect her to remember me after more than three years. Haruki-kun, this is... Um, look over there. As Setsuna felt puzzled about this situation, I pointed at the corner of the one display case. I pointed at the corner of one of the display cases. Eh? How? And Setsuna's reaction is exactly how I imagined it to be. She's now constantly looking at her left wrist and comparing what she's wearing on it with that item inside the display case. Are you looking for a present today as well? Uh, not really. But today, it seems you don't have to fuss over what to do for more than two hours like last time, right? That's probably why she remembers him. He just paced around the store for two hours. That would be unusual. Eh? Hold on. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Haruki-kun. I couldn't read the mood in there. Um... No, I'd be more surprised if you did manage to read it. Everything's been completely exposed. The price of the gift I gave her, the store I bought it from, as well as how long I ended up fussing over whether or not to buy it. Hey, I really don't mind this at all, you know. Rather, I'm actually quite happy to learn all this. I is that so? I'm sure she's not lying. After all, Setsuna has been fondly stroking the bracelet on her left wrist ever since she walked out of the shop. She never stopped, even after she discovered that it was nothing more than a cheap product. That salesperson is an interesting person, isn't she? Normally, they wouldn't spend o Normally, they wouldn't spend over two hours with the same customer, you know? I was the only male customer in the shop back then. I wonder if she thought about teasing me a little. The time gradually flew by as I found myself mesmerized by Setsuna's smile and cheerful tone. After meeting up at Suetsuko Cho Station, we took the train to the city and shared a meal together. We remained in the restaurant until lunchtime ended, and then we went window shopping at the station building. We talked, laughed, and walked side by side without reservation, as if we returned to how things were between us three years ago. No matter how I look at it, I've been on a date that's meant for us to make up with a... No matter how I look at it, We've been on a date that's meant for us to make up with one another. <sighs> Are you cold? Just a little. I see. Mm. We'd been maintaining a complicated distance between one another throughout the past three years. That is, until three months ago, when our relationship finally broke down. And on the exact same day we collapsed, I committed the unthinkable by seeking the comfort of another woman. However, in only a month, I ended up being betrayed by that woman. The very same woman who slathered me all over with honeyed lies and tempted me to fall into the depths of hell. But in the end, the one who picked me back up and saved me without a word after I'd fallen so deep was Setsuna, who's right in front of me now, who's right in front of me right now. She's the one who helped me recover physically when I was crippled by a fever. And she's the one who gave me the willpower to overcome the emotional scars that resurfaced due to that same illness. Hey, uh, Setsuna, hmm? are you getting tired? Uh, what do you say to getting some tea? Yeah, if it's fine with you, Haruki-kun. That's why our date meant for us to make up is still continuing. And it will keep going for as long as Setsuna and I want it to. 
That's why if we keep this up until spring arrives, and then summer, and then autumn, and if we promise now that we would share in the joy of finding our respective jobs, talking about the future, and celebrating our graduation together, perhaps in a year from now, we'd even be able to welcome a bright future together. The three years we spent up until now would be nothing more than a bad dream to us. The crowd sure is pouring in. We made the right choice by taking the chairs out. It was clear from the number of people in the line before opening that it would be standing room only. I wonder if we'll set another viewership record again. I'm not the leader of this troop, but I'd say it'd be a waste for it to end as some university club. So long as we have Senochi Akira, we could probably make a living off this even in other public theaters. That would be quite the sight to see. Sure, it'd probably be hard at first since we'd be starting out in the red. But if we work hard and maintain the pace we have now, the fans will recognize it. Still, she's quite fickle, so she could suddenly decide to participate in film, and we'd break up on the spot. That sounds like something that could really happen, Tanaka. Um, please consider letting me join? It's not about that. It's about today's show. Be prepared to get on stage at a moment's notice. This is only the first day, you know. There's something wrong with the princess. Are you okay? What do you mean? N nothing. You just look a little giddy. Well... That's just how you're looking at the situation. You're so nervous that you can't even stand straight right now, can you? Please, don't joke around like that. I know I'm not fully prepared, but I'm not as nervous as you think I am either. Is that so? I have absolutely no intention of dragging you down whatsoever. You can put your faith in me. Yoshida. Please, don't mock me with that smile of yours. It'll really affect my motivation. I had no intention of mocking you. I just want to tell you something in advance. You want to tell me something? You know, Yoshida. Y yeah? From this point on, I'll love you and adore you so much that I'll be consumed by it. Uh? I'll stop at nothing and struggle with all my might just so I can have you. And I'll become so obsessed with you, my efforts will end up biting me in the back. Uh. That's the sort of foolish woman I'll become. So please, just for these few hours, please, lovely, please love me with all you've got. Uh. And then... I want you to be wounded to the core of your heart by the conclusion that this foolish woman has chosen. You can do that for me, can't you? Uh, all right. You're not supposed to say all right, but yeah, Kazuki-kun. Yeah, I, I understand. Thank you for your patience. Watto's troops spring a performance. Todokunai Koi is about to begin. Do your best, Yukine. Let's enjoy our stage to its fullest. Thank you, Kazuki kun. <laughs> Who's the foolish woman here? Ogiso Setsuna? Toma Kazusa? Or is it. Thank you. 
Act 1, Scene 1. Nishimura Kazuki found himself troubled because a band competition sponsored by a certain musical instrument manufacturer was coming up next month. He had once vowed that he would make a debut with a major label company. But the band he enlisted for the competition broke up due to a petty conflict caused by a female member of the group. Thus, Kazuki was left with nothing to do but practice with his guitar in an empty classroom at sunset. And all that accompanied him was the melody of the piano performed by an unknown pianist from the classroom next to the one he was in. But on that day, while enjoying his customary carefree jam session with the neighboring pianist, Kazuki noticed yet another unfamiliar sound joining in together with them. It was not the sound of a musical instrument, but the vibrant, clear singing voice of a girl, one who would perfectly fit the role that he desperately needed to have filled at the moment. Uh, uh, me? Um... Could you be... the guitarist? Uh, uh, Class 3E, uh, Nishimura Kazuki. I see! So, you two were the ones playing White Album. Well, yeah, it was me and, uh, someone else I'm not familiar with. It's an old song, but... I really like it! Don't you feel the same way? This is the first song I learned how to play. My friends always teased me about how I was a bandwagoning poser, though. Uh, me too! It was the first song I ever sang when I went to karaoke for the first time! I think both the boys and the girls really liked it, though. Ah, I see. Ah, I'm sorry. I haven't told you my name yet. Nice to meet you, Guitar-san. I told you, I'm Nishimura. Act 1, Scene 2 Her name is Hatsushiba Yukane. Blessed with popularity and good looks, she's easily recognized by anyone as the school's number one beauty. She's also considered a mysterious student within her grade. Given her contradictory personality of having a bright demeanor, while also being rather distant in her relationships at the same time. But as for her true self, she's actually an amiable and family-oriented girl, and she can't bring herself to fully relinquish the label of being the school beauty that's being forced upon her, for she was just a little vain at heart. She also has a perfectly common hobby, karaoke. Nevertheless, she spends her days in discontent. Placed on such a high pedestal in school, she's had to change her pastimes and personality so as to not reveal her hobby to anyone. And thus, her hobby became karaoke. Rather, her hobby became enjoying karaoke by herself. Um, the starting chord for this song is... Ah, uh, I know this one! Huh? You know about it even though you've never played it before? Yeah, it's... 242802, isn't it? Huh? Ah, that's at my regular spot, Hyper Jam. Kazuki kun, do you go to X36000? Or Picara? What kind of code was that? There were minor adjustments to the story setting, but the opening act unfolded in a way that was almost identical to the original counterpart. However, the script's tone is also a lot more comedic in comparison, and the heroine was portrayed as being rather silly. The amateur singer, who's good at singing but only has her cuteness going for her, and the stubborn guitarist who's knowledgeable but 
very mediocre. They didn't seem to be on the same wavelength during practice. As she continues to spend more and more time with Kazuki, Yukine's facade of a beauty placed on the high pedestal also gradually peels away. But at some point, she also comes to enjoy the fact that Kazuki can see through it and appreciate her true self. Goodness me! I'm not that scattered brain! Act 1, Scene 3 The group has now assembled, a guitarist and a singer. Even so, I don't think that they have enough members yet. If they want to participate in the competition, they still require a bassist and a drummer, at the very least. There's only three weeks left until the competition. That's why Kazuki is desperate for an experienced candidates to fill the roles of bassist and drummer. At least, that's how things should have gone. So, what business do you have coming all the way here, Nishimura? Well, uh, you're good with the piano, right? That doesn't answer my question. If you're this good, then you can definitely make it within three weeks. Yes, I found our keyboardist! Weren't you looking for a bassist and a drummer? Fuyuki, I'm begging you, please join our band. Are you even listening to me? It doesn't matter what instrument you'll play. What really matters in a band is that all its members work well together, right? And what makes you think we'll work well together? Because you're the only one who can go along with my guitar playing. Then answer my question. Only someone as skilled as you can cover for my lousy performance on the guitar. I suppose I should commend you for the fact that you're able to rationally gauge your own ability. But that's all the more reason for you to consider the position you're in right now. Even so, I still want you to join, Fuyuki. In fact, I won't accept anyone other than you. Knock it off with that boorish flattery. You're actually giving me the chills. But it was you, wasn't it? You're the one who's been accompanying me with your piano all this time whenever I was feeling down. I don't know what you're talking about. Act 1, Scene 4 Her name is Fuyuki Haruna. With an infamous streak that's a stark contrast to Yukine's popularity despite their rivaling looks, she boasts a dominant presence in the school. Though, an unsettling one at that. She's an untouchable, a piano prodigy immune to any interference from the teachers due to her mother's influence as a famous pianist. But, as for her true self, she's the mysterious pianist who's always accompanying the protagonist's terrible guitar playing from the neighboring classroom. She's the mysterious pianist who always accompanies the protagonist's terrible guitar playing from the neighboring classroom. She's the one who sits right next to the protagonist in class. And she's actually quite compassionate despite her unapproachable exterior, though her compassion only ever seems to be for Kazuki alone. From the top. Fine. You know, if you can't even play this part without any mistakes, your demo tape will probably get a fail on the preliminary round. Ah, well, we already passed that, so that won't be an issue. It's just that I wasn't the guitarist at that time. Why did I, of all people, get involved with you anyway? 
It's pretty obvious that this band is going to be nothing more than the laughing stock of the contest. And to think I've never finished below second place in any of my own competitions. You really are amazing, Fuyuki. Well, that's all in the past. Come on, keep playing. Yeah. Hey, Nishimura. Hmm? Why are you so hell-bent on signing with a major record label or whatever? For all the effort you're putting in, you're barely improving at all. Was that a question, or were you just mocking me? Well, take it as a question. I guess, uh, maybe I just want to leave my mark on the world? Ow! <laughs> Wait a second. Why did you hit me when I gave you a serious answer? What sort of far-fetched nonsense are you saying with such a serious look on your face? Sheesh, I got goosebumps. That was so disgusting. It isn't really all that weird. I mean, every man should set a goal like that for himself at least once in his life, don't you think? I think you'd be better off saying you just want to be popular with the girls, don't you think? All of my old friends said the same thing. My goal had them rolling on the floor laughing. I was the worst at playing out of all of us after all. Why would you want to leave a mark in the first place? Are you really that happy to be alive right now? Huh? Scratch that. Never mind. Just forget it. Uh, huh? Anyway, well, that's an admirable goal you've got. Go for it. It's just too dazzling of a goal for me. It's just too dazzling of a goal for me to ever understand, though. I see. You don't get it, huh? You can A seem to understand it, though. You can A? She even said that she'd support me forever. She even said that she's my number one fan. <laughs> You're quite the realist, then. But it's such a waste of your talent. If you would just dare to dream a little big- Ow! 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 <laughs> Wait, hey! <laughs> why? Tell me why! <laughs> Fans of this theater troupe probably already knew about what's going on. And they're enjoying themselves despite being fully aware of that fact. They know that all of the main heroines in this play are portrayed by Sonochi Akira. The fact that this story's set up in a way that neither of the heroines have any interactions with one another, and the fact she's acting out both of their roles by herself, fully demonstrates her peerless skills as an actress. Up until a while ago, the famous actress was playing the first heroine who was bright and charming in character. But now she's portraying the second heroine, who's gloomy and hostile, and she's really making the two roles feel distinct. I'd note, however, that she's also planned for the second character to behave just a little more violently than her real counterpart, just so her emotions are easier to understand in a stage setting. Kazusa wasn't that unreasonable of a girl, was she? You think so? That's pretty much how she always acted, though, and she was pretty scary at that. Jeez. Twisted as she was, the genius pianist possessed skill and knowledge that far surpassed that of the mediocre guitarist. And she continued to bully the latter under the pretense of special training. And yet, he desperately clung to said special training as if he'd been waiting for those very days to come and worked on improving his skills. With the two spending more and more time alone together, their hearts grew even closer. That's the sort of overly natural development the story had. The only unnatural thing about it, then, was the fact that it wasn't the only natural development to occur. Thanks for watching. 
Please like and subscribe and all that. The performance of Chiaki's play has started. There have been some alterations to the truth to make this story more entertaining. But how will Haruki and Setsuna react to seeing their story played out? Especially when things start to go south. <laughs>